How's it going everyone? They call me the toaster and today I want to show you how to build this super efficient cactus farm. So let's get right into today's tutorial. So first I'm going to be showing you exactly what you're going to be building today. Then we'll do the full build with the materials list and at the end I'll share some technical details. This awesome cactus farm produces two stacks of cactus per hour. It fits inside of one chunk exactly. Some cool features about this build is that it uses fence gates to break the cactus. That way when you drop the item, it won't interfere. Also, this doesn't need to be boxed in. If you leave it exactly like this, none of the cactus will be able to fall outside of the farm. And lastly, it uses water to push them into these hoppers, which will fall into this chest below. So now that you know what you're going to be building today, let's move on to the materials list. Here's the full materials list for the build. You're going to need four stacks of building blocks. I'm going to be using stone bricks. You're going to need three stacks of sand, three stacks of cactus, 84 fence gates. You're going to need two pieces of glass, two hoppers, two chests, two water buckets to make an infinite source of water. And if you're building this in survival, you'll need a stack of temporary blocks to climb up the build. I'm going to be doing this build completely in survival mode because it can be tricky and I want to show you guys how it's done. So first we're going to outline our one chunk. So it's going to be 16 blocks. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then it's going to be 16 blocks again, but this one block counts. So we start at 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. We'll do it again. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And close in this box. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Perfect. Next, we're going to be digging out the area for the water. So where I'm standing is where the chest is going to be. This is going to be the collection part. So the back over here, that's the back of the build. So starting from over here, we're going to go out by seven blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then we're going to just dig out one more layer for the rest of it. So you should have two platforms. There's this one here where the water is going to flow downwards and then this lower pit and this is where the front of the build is going to be. So now we're going to place down the water. Place down one in the corner, skip a block and then put down another water source there. And that way if you go back to the second block in between, it's going to be an infinite water source. So you just keep going like this. You always just skip one and put another one there. You'll know you've done it right if the water flows off and goes into the second platform as well. Then what you're going to do is fill up your water buckets again. And now we're just going to place one in the corner over here. And look what happens. This spot here doesn't have a wave to it. So if we just left it like this and I put an items fell into this one spot here, they would just be stuck over here. What you have to do is place another water bucket at the second block from the wall. This is going to get rid of any blank spots and make sure that it gets funneled to the center. Now do the same thing for the other side. Go collect some more water and place one in the corner here and a second one right next to it. So now you'll see that the water, it funnels into these two blocks over here. So this is the center of the build. So this is where we're going to place down our hopper and chest. So we're going to break this out. Break this out by one as well. So what we need to do is break these two over here and place the hoppers pointing into those blocks. And then we're going to break these two pieces of dirt and place down the chest just like this. And now you should test it just to make sure. So if you put an item in the first hopper and you put an item in the second hopper, they should lead into the chest. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place glass on top of the chest and I'm going to close up this wall as well. And then I'm just going to dig out this area just so I have access to the chest. Just like that. So that's it for the water collection chamber. Now let's move on to the first platform. Before we start building our first platform, we have to take very important measurements. So from each of the corners, you're going to have to place three blocks diagonally like this. We're going to do that for all four of the corners and it's going to make things a lot easier in the next step. So even here, we're just going to place down three. And I'm going to break these ones because these aren't part of it. And also over here. So when that's done, it should look like this. You see we have three blocks going diagonally from each of the corners. So now starting from one of the corners, what we're going to do is after the three blocks diagonally, we're going to build two blocks up. And this is where it's going to start. 
So what we have to do here is just build a platform that goes in between all of those diagonal blocks. You see here we made it to the next diagonal block, so we're going to turn. Here I went out a bit too far, and then we're going to close this off. And now just fill in this platform completely. So the reason that we did it like this is because the platform needs to be three blocks away from the edge. So now what you're going to do is place down sand every other block and place your cactus above it. Then what you're going to do is you're going to break these blocks in between the cactus. Then what you're going to do is you're going to place sand diagonal to the one next to it. You're going to place a cactus on top and then you're going to put three temporary blocks here. And here's your, where you're going to place your fence gate and be sure to leave it open. You have to open up all the fence gates otherwise the cactus is going to just get stuck on the gates. Now continue to place your sand diagonally, place another cactus on top, and that's good. Then we're going to make another temporary pillar that is three blocks tall. Put down another fence gate and open that one. And then we're going to place down another sand with a cactus on top. And then we're going to build up another pillar again. Open it up, and here we could place this one on this side as well, and open that up. Then we're going to place the last sand with a cactus on top. So that part might have been a little tricky, but if you notice, the fence gate is inside of the gap. So it's in between the sand. That's where the fence gate has to go. So then what we're going to do is we're going to break out these bricks as well. And then we're going to do our next row. So we're going to just place the sand in between like that, followed by the cactus just like that so these fences apply to all of these cactus over here so we'll be okay let's do the next row so first we have to break all of the blocks in between this is so that the cactus has a clear way down into the water below then we're going to do our next row then we're going to break the blocks in between this row as well so now we need to place another row of fence gates so what you're going to do is you're going to place a three tall temporary pillar we're going to place an open fence gate on this side, open fence gate on this side, and we'll take down this tower. And we'll build it over here, so that way we can place the open fence gate on this side and on this side and be done with it. So now we're going to place the next row of cacti. We're going to place down the sand along with the cactus. Then we're going to break the blocks in between them and we can do our next row. After you place the sand, you can place down the cactus. And there we go. So this fence gate does all of these ones over here. We just have a little bit more left to go. So be sure to break the blocks in between the sand. Then what we're going to do is build our three high pillar again with the open fence gate on either side. And then we're going to come to this side over here, build the three high pillar with a fence, an open fence gate on either side. Now we can put down more sand with cactus on top. And we got to break the blocks in between. We're so close to finishing the first platform, we just have to do this last little strip. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to break the block. I'm going to place the sand and then the cactus and I'm just going to go one at a time like that. Break the block, place the sand and the cactus. Break the block. And then I guess here for this last one, I can't really be standing on it. So I'll move out over here, place the sand and place the cactus. And give yourselves a big pat on the back. We have just finished the first layer of the platform. So I'm going to show you how to start the second layer. All you have to do is just to get on top of the fence gate. So if I build up one block, it's going to be the same level as the sand. 
this next block is going to be the same level as the cactus and then this next block is the fence gates so now i can start my platform right here on top of that one then just go ahead and outline your platform and then start the second build So when you're building the second platform, you want to make sure that the holes are aligned. So you see, for example, below this one, the cactus is in this corner over here. So I would want to repeat the same thing on this second floor above over here. I want to make sure that the cactus are always in line because what happens is when the cactus breaks, they're going to fall down the holes with the fence gates and go all the way down to the water stream. So where the cactuses were on the floor below is exactly where they need to go above. So then you copy exactly what you did on the floor below. You're going to place sand in every alternate block, place a cactus on top of that, break out the ones in the middle, and continue that process until you have all six levels, or you could do as many levels as you'd like. Six levels gives you two stacks an hour, so I think that three levels would give you one stack an hour. Based off of how much cactus you need, you can build as many levels as you want. So after you finish with the second platform, you have to come down here and we're just going to fix the water streams that we broke before. We're going to break all, any temporary block that we have placed here, including the three ones in the corners that kind of outlined where we needed to build. And be sure to fill in the waters in the corners for those blocks that you may have broke. Perfect. So now that our water stream is working again, you could see that no matter where cactus may fall into here, Eventually, it's just going to get funneled into the hoppers. And that's it for the build. I hope you liked it. If you did, please leave me a like, leave me a comment, tell me what you think, and hit the subscribe button. I would really appreciate it. All right, so now what I wanted to do was just to explain some technical details about why this farm is so efficient and some cool mechanics that I took advantage of. So the way that a cactus farm works is that cactus can only be placed on sand, either red sand or regular sand. I could put a cactus here and a cactus here, but you can't put it on grass or any other type of block. Another thing about cactus is that it can't be touching another block. So if I, you see, I can't put this cactus next to here. And if I was to build the sand up by one, it would break the cactus. So they can't be touching a block on any of their four sides, but they can be touching blocks on the diagonal that won't break it. You see here, I have four diagonal sands touching this cactus and it won't break but if I place one on the side it will break so if we have our cactus on our sand and what we do is we build our three high pillar with a fence gate you'll see that if the cactus grows it's just going to break right away but what happens is that we're going to have a whole row of fences it's going to be all the way up to six levels and if one of the cactus falls on the fence gate it's just going to get stuck in the trap you see that when the fence gate is closed let me try to line up this shot right over here Oh yeah, there we go. So when the fence gate is closed, the items just get stuck on top of it. But if a fence gate is open, it doesn't have a hitbox and the items pass right through straight to the floor. That's why it's very important that you open up the fence gates. I also really didn't like the idea of wasting a whole bunch of blocks just to enclose this whole area. It would take so many blocks just to fill this all in. So what I wanted to do was to see how far away does the cactus fly from its original source. So I built this test to see how far they would fly away. There's a lot of command blocks, but it's a simple test. If a cactus lands on one of these wooden pressure plates, it's going to turn it green. So that way I'll know where the cactus is landing. So let's start the test right now. So I let this thing run for a while and let's check it out. So it looks like from either side, it goes out one, two, three on this one. One, two, three on this one. One, two, three. So it looks like three blocks is the furthest that the cactus could fly away from this build. So I'm going to incorporate that into the water stream. And knowing that the cactus can't fly more than three blocks out means that we won't have to box in this whole area. This is fully efficient. It's going to capture all the cactus that falls. And that's it for the video. I hope you like it. I hope you get a ton of cactus for your world because it is a super useful item. But that's it for today. I hope you have an awesome day. Toaster out.